What's going on guys, Vic VP back with another Game Case Arcades video. Check it out, another build in the books. We got a pedestal Street Fighter 2 control panel artwork on this one. So as you guys know from New York over here, I'm on Letgo, I'm on Craigslist. You can always find me on that and you can always find my builds and pricing and that's kind of like my marketplace until I get a website. So I got a message on Letgo, somebody wants a control panel. I actually had lying around the Street Fighter control panel from a couple of videos back. Nobody ever bought it, but now somebody's actually taking the Street Fighter control panel. Again, let's take a closer look at this one. Control panel with two PS3 controllers for four player action, especially with arcade games such as The Simpsons and TMNT. Let's flip the camera, you guys don't like selfie mode, and let's take a closer look at this control panel. All right guys, so check it out. This is probably like my fourth pedestal. Uh, this one I did go with the Z313 speakers on this only because they've been so good and they're so cheap. I got a good deal at Micro Center, so check it out real quick. Let's take a closer look. First thing, let's look at the control panel. LED buttons, game room solutions, zippy joysticks, 20 button layout. We have our LEDs set up to the LED strip. We obviously have our underglow on this. So the control panel underglow, our first shelf has underglow underneath here and our second shelf here. So check it out real quick. Pedestal with the LEDs. Could take a look at the back. The back, again, it's always hidden. But basically we have a lot of our staples here. This is all speaker wiring. This is the only real way to hide the wiring for the speakers. Uh, take a look real quick at the Z313 speakers. These are screwed in. So these aren't going anywhere. You could literally nowhere. So these will not move. The only thing I didn't screw down is the subwoofer. So the subwoofer does move only because it does need air for the speaker. So again, on this, I did not bolt down the subwoofer on this only because again, there is a pocket where the subwoofer actually, you know, kicks and it does need air. So I was gonna double edge tape this, but I'm not too sure what I'm gonna do with that yet. But real quick, just check it out. It's a beautiful, it's an actual nice piece like a showcase. You could put this in your house, very clean. Again, control panel is bolted I should say screwed, not bolted, but it is screwed into the stand. You can't move this control panel. It won't go anywhere. Uh, again, we got our PS3 controllers wireless on these, of course, for four player action. Um, let's take a closer look at the inside. Again, everything on the inside of this. Power strip, LED plugs. We got our pie right here. Again, it's such a tight fit. I'll be brutally honest. It's so tight, especially leaving the power strip in here. Just real quick, wanna to touch up on LEDs. I mean, again, 3M taped on this. Uh, I actually got a really good set of LEDs, very shockingly, from Amazon. Um, Govi? I mean, these were like, I couldn't believe the 3M tape. Uh, it actually held up very well. The only big thing to keep in mind about LEDs that's very difficult is that you have to be careful. Um, first thing off the bat, I always hot glue any kind of flex point. So this is where the LED is coming in. And unfortunately with me kind of opening and closing the control panel, I actually cut, this is actually an LED strip going right here. I actually cut into it. Um, so I kind of put this strip too close to the bottom. And basically once you actually brought it down, it actually cut into it. So it destroyed it. Basically right now we did a 18, four, basically four wires. Now we'll connect here and there you have it. Uh, the thing I do like about this specific strip that I got, when you cut the power, it actually keeps memory of what the last setting was. So really cool. I had it set to fade before. I have my sensor in the back here. Really nice when it's set to fade mode. Again, our LED buttons are hooked up to the red on the LED strips. You do get a nice fade going on. Um, Unfortunately, when I did get the control panel from Game Room Solutions, um, I forgot to mention Orion not to cut the face. This right here really goes with the USB. Um, it's a USB extender. Um, I told I didn't. I forgot to actually tell him not to cut it, so he did cut it. So this just has a dummy yellow button that I had lying around. So, I mean, again, right now this is set. Check it out underneath. Not much of a gap. I'll be honest. You have a, a little bit of a gap going on. But I'll be honest, it is resting on the plug. 
that's why it's very difficult with this kind of setup to put the strip and hide everything. But it's something that crazy, again, perfectly set. It doesn't go anywhere near the Zinmo. It doesn't even go into these wires. So it's not that crazy and it's not that drastic. There we have it, another control panel. Again, custom made control panel. I did the Photoshop artwork on this. Street Fighter 2, you can see the other video I made on it. Basically sat down. We got all the PNG files, so it's a nice clean cut. We even got the gray and black kind of background. Our fighters are here. I even went to the extent of doing the whole jab punch kind of thing. Did a little, mar this is actually on the um, bezel artwork. We have the whole Street Fighter fam right here going on. Ryu's Hadouken on the exit, Ken's Hadouken on the shift. Really nice, easy, simple setup. And again, this right now is set for pickup. This is exactly what a pedestal looks like. Basically, you supply the TV and you could have an arcade on a stand. Again, really nice setup, very simple. We're gonna take a couple of pictures, really cool. I really like this control panel. It is very wide. Two players on this is more than enough. Again, we do have my four player um, image rocking on this. Again, arcade control sticks are always player one and player two. We're gonna load up some Street Fighter. Um, one thing I do wanna note about this and what I learned about the Raspberry Pi 3s, for some reason on the Pi 3s, the audio is just low. I was able to go into the, um, I was able to go into the command line on this and we bumped it up and now it's insanely loud. Like, watch this. Volume controller on the right, again, Z313. You have your microphone input here, very nice and smooth, right along the edging. Double-edged taped on that, I did not Velcro that one. Really cool, again, I have this set to like, plus four decibytes. This is like half. And again, the microphone is pointing away from the speaker. Let's load up some quarters. Again, coin one. Coin two, player two start. I'm gonna put the LED controller down. We're gonna do our Ryu and Ken. This one I'm giving the customer, I think it's a 20 foot cord, HDMI cable. It's pretty long, comes right out of the back of it. Real quick, can we do a one-handed Hadouken? Nope. All right, again, two player action on this. Street Fighter, we got our load and our save state. So we're gonna save the state. You could see it right there in the wording. Basically now I could beat you up a little bit and I could reload our last mode. Again, two button exit on this, so shift exit. We are back to the home screen. Let's load up some four player action. Again, we have our wireless PS3 controller, so I'm gonna turn that on, that's one. I got the other one down here. They will light up as LED button two. I am button one, uh, LED one on it. Real quick, we're gonna load up the Simpsons. As you know, I always like my Simpsons games. The Deep, A, B, C, D, F, G, H, I, J, K, R, S. Here we go, the Simpsons. One button and one button only. Again, four player action on this. Again, PS3 controllers. Oh, this actually notified it as, bun as player four, sweet. Even if it does have LED one and two on it, it's perfectly fine. Basically right now, check it out. Loading up the Simpsons. So we got player one is Marge. Player two is Homer. Player three, Bart. And we got player four, Lisa. We're gonna press start on all of these. Button start, button start, button start. Really cool, totally liking it. Again, you can see real quick, I mean, simple staples, you have to do it, this is a wired setup. Real quick though, we're moving Bart. This now goes into tag team mode with Lisa, uh, Marge and Bart, uh, Marge and Homer. Let's load up player four. That is it, somebody could now enjoy four player action on this. Real quick, I'm gonna put the camera down because I'm pretty sure you guys are nauseated. Uh, and let's just check out how high this thing is and all that in case anybody wants to see and purchase another one. Back in real quick, I know the camera is pretty close, but just to show you 
height wise on this pretty high I mean I'm about 5'11 so this is right at my belt line and my pants are low <laughs> so this is right at my waist so this is perfect I'm not hunched back to load it up check it out real quick audio controller microphone on this I'm gonna do one player at least on this for now I'll load up two player actually so I got my two player going on we're gonna do some two player uh, Marge and Homer on this and again this has about I would say a good 30 games there's about 30 arcade games that are set to four player mode um, TMNT you got some WrestleFest going on so I'm gonna separate Marge and Homer first so as you can see we're gonna move Marge with us I mean again I'm gonna try to stay on player one because I know you guys can see me Move you guys over. Move. I mean, again, even with me beating this up, the control panel is not really moving too much. Let's load up some Street Fighter. This way, we can at least see it a little bit better as far as how this works. I'm just gonna load up like Super Street Fighter. You know, it's the funniest thing. A lot of people see me doing Street Fighter. I'm not really that good at Street Fighter. <laughs> Let's load up some Super Street Fighter just for kicks. Again, microphone is pointed my way, so we're gonna bump up the speaker on this a little bit. Okay. Oh, I should have done this player. Let me reload. I should have done just one player just so we can get real kind of situations going on. Just gonna do one player. Again, really simple setup on this, really nice and easy. So real quick guys, I just wanna show you how easy it is to set this thing up. Again, the customer is gonna get it just like this, all LED'd out, everything is off right now. But basically, setup is very simple. There's two wires coming out of the back of this. One is your main power uh, connection, which is going into the strip. And you have one wire, which will be your HDMI video cable out. So this one, I am gonna give the customer this long extent, this long cord, I have it handy. Basically, all you gotta do, the only one like little thing to keep in mind, especially with this control panel, is that keep in mind that everything is underneath the control deck. So I've been playing with this for about three hours, I would say, and I just got it. We do have the temperature icon that appeared. So do keep this in mind, I literally put my hand on the pie and it's pretty warm, I'm not gonna lie to you, it is warm, but keep in mind that it is enclosed in this very tight space with not much ventilation. If you do wanna put a fan on it, I probably suggest you do, or in reality, I would love to actually put the pie out of here, but now you got a pie sticking out. But real quick, the one thing I love about the Raspberry Pis, I love the attract mode, is check it out. After one minute, 60 seconds, this does go into a track mode, and it shows off the games that are in the system. So I was in Super Nintendo. And now it's gonna show all, I think I have 700 Super Nintendo games. It's gonna show all Super Nintendo in this attract mode. I love it. A lot of my customers that send me their game rooms, they just love this. And you'll see it just, it goes through. Nice artwork, sound setup to it. So if you picture it, you know, inside of a actual upright arcade or a bar top, you could literally walk away from this and call it a day. Again, the control panel is great. My only one downside I always notice is that this does get overheated. I do have this pie overclocked as well. 
So that might be part of it too. But again, I've been playing with this for about three hours, finalizing everything. And again, it is inside of this very tight box. Again, check it out. A track mode, speakers, volume controller. Very cool. Forgot to show off night mode. So with the lights off, again, look at the glow, underglow, the back glow. Really awesome setup. I love this. This is amazing. Customer is ready to pick it up. All you gotta do is take your power cord and you literally just gotta plug it in. Once you plug it in, LEDs turn on, everything turns on, your screen should then turn on. If you have your TV off, you got your little loading screen going on. And again, speakers are already on, LEDs are already on, and this basically will boot up into a track mode. Uh, it takes about, I don't know, about a minute. Oh, it's got a nice little um, screen, pretty cool loading screens, a lot of different types. I think I have like a hundred. Uh, just fun stuff. Some of them, some people like the whole retro to it. Again, live stuff. We just plugged it in. Clock is saying 41 seconds on my camera. Basically, you're going to see the command line boot up. There we go. I got my speaker low, I think. Yep. <laughs> Very easy. You could then go into some arcades. All listed by systems. I always do my ma'am. Ma'am, mame, whatever you want to call it. Got a little video. One button load. And I'm going to have my speaker set to very loud on this. Super Street Fighter. Again, arcade needs coins. Going to let this warning sign skip. Again, this is set. I have the audio set to max. We have our screen set to 16 by nine. I personally like my 16 by nine resolutions on this. We could load up mostly a lot of stuff. We're gonna do some consoles. Let's load up the, the Super Nintendo fine. And let's see, X-Men, cool. Let's do some X-Men Mutant Apocalypse. Old school Super Nintendo game. As you can see, we are loading up. I think said 1994? I was four years old when this came out. <laughs> Again, so many classics. 15,000 games we're talking about. Remember the main thing about Super Nintendo and the NES? You would you need to press the start button. Not like button A, but the start button. See, so press start, mission mode. This again, same thing. You could save and load. So we're gonna save our state. You can literally see every time you save, you do have a little bit of a yellow wording going on. 100%. Basically now if I load it, then we could exit. There you go. So again, a lot of stuff, a lot of games. A zombie ate my parents, my neighbors. <laughs> I'm sorry. Zombies ate my neighbors. Let's check this one out real quick. Again, two players on this zippy joystick set to eight-way joysticks. This is a Konami game. Old school stuff. Again, really cool. I mean, you got, again, four-player action. So when we play, like, N64, really the the PS3 controls are going to be the best way to do it. But you could play games like Mario Kart 64 with the arcade sticks. Again, we do have player one and two notifies it. I never really played this game, but I heard it's a classic. Literally playing with button one. That is it, guys. Another pedestal in the books. Vic VP Game Case Arcades. We build arcades. Anything you could think about, we build it.